Welcome to this edition of Champion Chat. I'm Frances Reed, and I'm Programme Director for the World Ovarian Cancer Coalition. This edition focuses on advocacy, and we thought it would be interesting to hear from the perspective of a politician, often on the receiving end of advocacy approaches. So I'm delighted to be able to welcome Sharon Hodgson. She is Labour Member of Parliament for Sunderland and Washington West, which is in the northeast of England. She's been an MP since 2005. Um, she is the Shadow Minister for Veterans, and together with our Charter Champions Target Ovarian Cancer in 2010, started the all-party parliamentary group on ovarian cancer. Sharon, it's a great pleasure to welcome you. Thank you, thank you for having me. Nice to see you again, Francis. Can you start by explaining what an all-party parliamentary group is? Okay, well, um, APPG, all-party parliamentary group, um, is just a, a cross party, um, cross house, so it's peers and MPs, group of MPs who all come together to campaign um, within Parliament and outside on a single issue um, that is, you know, Im important to us because um, there are so many um, thousands and thousands of issues that we get emails on every week and you, every MP can't cover them all. What can an all-party parliamentary group do? Well, we can um, write reports, we can hold meetings, we can send press releases, um, respond to events in the media. We can invite speakers along to meetings in parliament, be that parliamentarian or external supporters, um, specialists with regard to ovarian cancer. We can have um, clinicians, patients. And we usually have a, a, an organisation or charity that acts as a secretariat. And in this case, we've got the fabulous Target Ovarian Cancer who've been with me from the beginning and um, when we set it up. So um, we can't force, we're not a select committee, so we can't force anybody to come and give evidence. Um, but, you know, usually if you invite someone, you might have to wait a while, but nobody really refuses. Going back to 2010, why did you decide to form the group on ovarian cancer? Well, I remember meeting with, um, you know, the, the various cancer charities um, and, you know, met with uh, the, the ovarian cancer charities in the early days. And we did talk about it pre-2010, about um, setting up a, a, a cancer-specific group for ovarian cancer. And at the time, um, the chair of the um, cancer all-party group wasn't really keen on having loads of separate all-party cancer groups. He was quite keen on that the cancer all-party group should be an umbrella organisation and fight for all cancers and fight for all cancers to get recognition. So we sort of um, thought, well, we'll give it six months a year and, and see how it goes. And then what happened, we had a fantastic reception um, organised um, and the public health minister at the time was Rosie Winterton and she, it was Labour, we were still in government and she came along and we were pushing for better um, um, awareness and awareness raising campaign. We wanted the Department of Health to fund and organise and push an awareness raising campaign. You know, we set it up then in 2010 um, and there were so many MPs then um, that came along and told us their story with regard to their own experiences, fam you know, family members. Um, and, you know, we, we realised we could be really strong together as a cross-party, cross-house group. And I think we've, um, you know, we, we've done some really good work. So the group has members of parliament who've had ovarian cancer or family members who've had ovarian cancer. What has been the impact of their stories on the group? Yeah, we've, we've had a number of people who've had ovarian cancer, our family members had. And I remember um, Fiona McTaggart was one of our early members and she had um, survived um, ovarian cancer out. And she was a fantastic advocate. More recently, um, also back in the early days, David Lamney, I remember giving a speech at the reception. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Um, his mum had died from ovarian cancer. And the his speech about all of her symptoms and how she would talk about her bad back and bloating. They bought her a new mattress. They thought she was constipated. They had given her every concoction for constipation. And if any of them had known the symptoms, they would have been saying to her, this was for years. They would have been saying, mom, we think we know what it is. You've got to get to the doctors. I mean, she was back and forward to the doctors as well. And 
um, you know, it wasn't caught until it was too late. More recently, we've had Andrew Gwynn, um, you know, at the Make Time for Tea in Ovarian uh, Cancer Awareness Month. He has sort of, I think the last two or three years, told the story of his um, journey as a young man, 19 at university, when he lost his, his mum to ovarian cancer. She, they didn't even tell him um, what was wrong with her. He knew she wasn't well, but she didn't want him to miss going to university. Um, what he, that, when you hear that story, it's so powerful. And you realise how, you know, this isn't rare. This is, you know, there's probably loads more who haven't felt able to come and talk about it either. You know, even in a small group of 650 MPs, there's lots of MPs who've got a personal story to tell connected with um, ovarian cancer. What have been some of the key achievements of the group? I think the, 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 the groups had some significant achievements over the last 10 years. And I think definitely at the top of them is that we have helped to raise awareness of ovarian cancer right across parliament. Um, because it, we do try and raise it as often as we can. Um, we've also done a lot about encouraging awareness around symptoms um, and talking about what those symptoms are, try and get it in if there's any opportunity to insert that in the speech. I always do, you know, the, the, the five uh, key symptoms. We also helped with some of the big campaigns around access to drugs, um, which was, you know, is been some of the more satisfying stuff. And I think um, Avastin was one of one of those, and there's probably other drugs that I can't remember the names of. Um, so that was really good. Um, also getting the ear of health min ministers, um, one of whom, um, Steve Bryan, was a former vice chair. Um, and then he went on to become the public health minister. So, you know, you, you never know where um, membership of, of these groups can take you, because obviously he had a passion for cancer um, and uh, he ended up being public health minister. So that was great. More recently, in the last few years, we the groups um, hosted the Teal Hero photo opportunity in Parliament, where MPs can go along um, and have their photograph taken wearing a, a a silly superhero costume um, and it's all about sharing the symptoms of ovarian cancer on social media and in the local press and we have a little competition about who's the best teal hero um, and so that's fun um, and we've also taken action on um, the need for earlier diagnosis and in 2018 the group held its first inquiry in, entitled Diagnosing Ovarian Cancer Sooner, What More Can Be Done? And um, the report of the inquiry outlines what more needs to be done in prevention, screening, awareness and diagnosis of ovarian cancer. And um, so the, you know, we, we did it like a little select committee inquiry. Um, again, we can't force anybody to come. That's one of the differences. But following the publication of the report of the all party group, the Secretariat then had the opportunity to meet with the Minister to discuss the findings of the report. And that was, um, that was extremely useful. So I think we've done quite quite a lot in the last 10 years. But you know, there's always, always going to be more areas and things that need to be done for the all party group to focus on. Um, and especially, you know, in the world of coronavirus and post coronavirus, if we ever get there, and um, the pandemic is sort of really impacted on the diagnosis and treatment of all cancers, not just ovarian cancer. Um, and so that's probably one of the things I think over the next 12 months, I want the all party group to focus on, um, you know, and that we can get services back to pre pandemic levels as soon as possible. What advice would you give to individuals, to patient advocacy groups, to clinical groups who want to engage with their elected representatives? Can you give us some do's and don'ts? Um, don't send us massive long emails with huge reports because that will just get passed to our researchers straight away. Um, the thing to do, engage as briefly as possible with personal um, at store, you know, personal experiences, ideally from constituents. If you're writing to a particular MP or if you're going to plan on writing to all MPs, try from your sort of your advocates that you've got and your, um, your stakeholders, your patient groups to find one person at least from each of those MPs constituencies. Even better, get that constituent to write and be the conduit writing to the MP about whatever the issue is. Um, sharing their personal situation, what happened to them. It's their correspondence that gets our attention first every day before any of the other organisations or charities. So if, you know, if it's coming in from, you know, Mr or Mrs constituent, um, 
telling us to get involved, telling us to get involved with a particular charity campaign, they are always going to get our attention first, always going to get a response, um, because, you know, that's who employers say the voters. So um, that's the sort of main thing I would say to, uh, you know, when you're, when you're engaging. If, you, if you're a, a clinician, say, and, and you're wanting to engage, again sort of think along those lines you know to, you might be able to find a constituent but just think brief you know something short and, and snappy because we've got so much that we have to read um and if it's just too big you know that can be that can be something you send later when you've had the response and i'm thinking especially you know like what i've just said with regard to post covid in um all of the work we're going to have to do to try and get everything back up to back up to speed but you know there's going to be so many people getting in touch so it's really important to remember what the specific ask is and what it is you want the mp to do you know is it right to a minister is it sign a pledge is it sign a petition is it something to move the issue forward you know, what is it you i don't need your life story what is it you want me to do and then i can say whether or not i can i can do that Thank you, Sharon, for all the work that you do on behalf of women with ovarian cancer in the United Kingdom and for taking time out of what I know is a very busy day. Thank you. Very happy to. Thank you.